Last one, this is like probably like the most fun drill, I think. So you want to be practicing passing to a corner rather than straight on. Or I've had balls hit me in the head and like it's up. I'm like, wow. <laughs> you can do that all by yourself at home with no net and no friend. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. It's Jacoby. If you're new here, what's up? My name's Jacoby and I teach volleyball on this channel. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe, like this video, and leave a comment down below. Um, also, follow me on Instagram and TikTok at jacoby.sims if you're interested in that. And let's get it. So in today's video, I'm going to tell you some drills that you can do at home if you are training without a net um, or a friend. Okay, so if you're completely alone at home and just want to get some touches on the ball, uh, keep watching. <laughs> okay, so first drill that you can do, and also this, this requires a ball. That's the only equipment you need is a ball. And once again, guys... What do I say like in every video? Go get a ball if you can. Okay, it's key to success, promise. Well, first of all, you're gonna go outside and you're gonna just serve against the wall. So what you can do to make this more realistic, I did this when I was growing up. So I would get like a piece of chalk and I would have my dad or just myself and I would grab like his tape measure and I would measure out like about how high, the, how high I thought the net was at that time and just mark it with a little bit of chalk and that's where you want to hit the ball at like a, as like it acts like a target basically and it's okay if it's not completely like correct it's never going to be exact without a, you know an actual net but it's okay and also i try to just make it like um if i'm gonna like be wrong i want it to be a little bit higher than um lower because if you practice like serving on a lower point than the net then obviously your serve will not go over so it's better to be um higher um just so you can practice getting it over the net also when you're serving against the wall you want to um serve pretty far back or you can always you know progress your way back but you want to make sure that you're not just staying at one point like super super close to the wall and just serving like if that's what you're comfortable with starting out like that's completely fine but you want to make sure that you're progressing further and further and further back because you want to mimic like you're on an actual court and you know not everyone has like the dimensions of an actual court in their driveway <laughs> many people don't so it's okay to just like progress your way back but you want to be pretty far back because once again you rather overestimate than underestimate also when you're serving against the wall you can go through your like your entire routine like or you can just create a serving routine like what i do like i hit the ball twice spin it in my hand and then deep breath look up, up at my elbow and then i serve so you can practice your routine you can also practice a float serve or a top spin serve or a hybrid serve or a jump serve or a jump top spin serve like there's so many things that you can do just serving against the wall so another drill that you can do is serve and run so basically that means like you'll serve against the wall just how i explained um earlier and then you'll run into the court into your position into a defensive stance and stay there because sometimes like you're serving, but then you have to run to the other side of the court because that's where your base is or that's where you're supposed to be. And it's like, oh, if you don't get there, like bad things could happen. Because say like you serve, right? And they overpass it and it lands right where you're supposed to be. Not a good look. So we're going to practice and mimic um, that action just by running back into the court. Court. I, I say that like just closer to the wall, get in a defensive stance and just be ready to move. And that's a great way to mimic that action. Next, I absolutely love this draw. I did this a lot. So you can also like mark this with chalk, but you really don't have to. You can probably just visualize it. But um, this drill is just passing to a corner. So of course, like passing like straight on to the wall is fine. But realistically, you're in typically not going to be passing just straight in front of you. You're always going to have to be passing at an angle to the setter. So the setter stands in right front or right back. But I mean, obviously, like you want to pass the ball like not too on the net where it's difficult for the setter to get it, but not way off the net where it's even harder for her to get it. So you want to be like nice and in kind of like the middle towards the right side um, and on the net, but not too far over the net. That's like the perfect like zone for the setter to be. So you want to practice that. So you want to be practicing passing to a corner rather than straight on because it's not going to be the same on the court and you want what you're practicing at home to translate onto the court. So you want to practice getting the ball to target, which is the setter. But target is a spot, it's not a person. Remember that, <laughs> that's important. Next drill that goes just, um, it goes hand in hand with last drill I just said, but except we're gonna be using our hands to pass to the target. Once again, very important. Hand passing is very important because you never know. Sometimes the ball might catch you high 
and you don't have the space obviously to go up here because your platform will go backwards so you have to get your hands up and push forward next row goes hand in hand with the last two i just said except we're going to be back setting into a corner um or into um target i mean eh, like that will rarely probably happen but it's all it's always good to be prepared you know and just be just learn how to get good touches on the ball and also if you can hit a target backwards you are going to be able to hit it a lot better just looking at it right it really um helps with accuracy okay so next row is hitting against the wall except you're not going to just like stand super close to the wall you're going to be off so this mimics like out of system hitting because the best hitters are like the best out of system hitters because if you can score like super far off the net, you're gonna be like a pretty good hitter. But cause I mean like anyone can really just go up on the net and if the ball is tight, like hit the ball really hard. But like if you can like, score off the net, you're amazing. So you wanna practice, you wanna practice that. So um, you don't wanna be like just hitting against the wall super close where it's coming back to you and you can just snap on the ball again. Like that's a good warm up drill, but not really what we're trying to accomplish here. So you wanna back up, back up, back up, and you wanna practice your approach and then hitting against the wall or just practicing your standing there and you're just practicing your arm swing against the wall, but you're still pretty off your wall instead of just being super close. You wanna be pretty far back. And also you can self toss and work on your approach that way or toss with two hands or you can just stay on the ground. It really depends on what you're comfortable with. Okay, so next you can work on tipping and covering. So covering is really, really important in volleyball because, you know, there's a block that's trying to, you know, prevent you from getting a clean kill or a kill at all. So sometimes like a hitter will hit into the block and the ball will come off and it will come back on your side and you have to cover that ball so they don't score, basically. So what the one of them, so one way you can mimic that is by throwing the ball against the wall and then running under it and getting the ball up by lifting. So meaning that like here's the wall, you're gonna start kind of far back, not like too far where you can never touch it because that's not like the purpose of the drill, but you wanna be kind of far back, throw it, and then you see the ball coming down, down, down. You wanna be under the ball and lift up. That's a good way to mimic, um, mimic covering. Um, also, if you have a basketball goal in your yard, you can always like throw it against the basketball goal and it'll come down and then you'll be under it and lift up. The key word that you probably heard me say it like a million times during that little segment was under the ball. You want to be under the ball when you're covering. You never want it to be like really like in front of you where you have to reach or behind you. That makes things really difficult and you lose control that way. So you really want to be under the ball under your hitter to cover them the best way. Next, you can just pepper against the wall, so that means pass, set, hit. So meaning that you can start with like a toss against the wall, the ball will come back to you, you pass it against the wall, it'll come back to you, set it against the wall, it comes back to you, and then you're gonna hit down. Or you can hit at the wall again and continue your pepper. It's really whichever you wanna do. Pepper is really good for ball control, especially when you're doing it with yourself because you have to focus on, on getting the ball up rather than like going out to someone because if you're peppering with a partner like that's obviously good too but like sometimes you can practice overpassing that way you don't necessarily want to overpass so you want to be good at both peppering with yourself and a wall and with a partner last one this is like probably like the most fun drill i think um so you can just like juggle the ball so that's like kind of a soccer term but like you can practice like kicking the ball with your feet or just like getting it up with your elbow or like i don't know what is it called like a header like you can just like head the ball i don't know um, and that's a really good way just to practice your touch on the ball because you've probably seen that like on the internet like people, people have like crazy kick saves or the ball like hits their foot randomly or they just like chicken wing it and like it hits their elbow and it's up randomly, right? You can emulate that situation or that scenario by just practicing it because you never know literally like I don't think I've ever had a kick save but I've had balls like hit my foot and it's up I'm like, oh my gosh, like that's crazy or I've had balls hit me in the head and like it's up I'm like, wow, <laughs> great So it's just cool to kind of like practice that as well and you can do that all by yourself at home um, with no net and no friend. But that's it for this video, you guys. I hope you really liked it. If you did, please let me know. Um, let me know if this was helpful because I was hoping it would be, but nah, I don't know. But thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for your support. Subscribe, like this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Did y'all hear my shoulder pop? <laughs> Woo, <laughs> old age, baby.